we done the Lost Speedway. People started coming, and they asked me, how long did you know Dale Jr.? I said, I've really never known him. Yeah. I said, the closest we ever was was St. Louis when the racetrack come apart. That day it was 400 oh, degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there turned around backwards because everybody's spied out, and you hit me head on. Yep. Slide into me. Yep. And I said, God. I mean, I seen you coming at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you want to know the truth about that? So I'm driving. I bought this car from somebody, and me and my late mama boys, Wesley, and a couple other people, we'd fix this thing up and got it ready to go. But we didn't insulate the the oil box or nothing. And it, it just, I was cooking. We all were. Yeah. And when there, I saw there was a wreck off of two, I could not wait to get in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, now I can tell the story. Because, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want to say anything. I, I remember you getting out, and you said, have you ever been this damn hot in a race car? <laughs> yes. And I said, no. You said, man, if my dad knew I was falling out of the seat, he was kicked. I remember that yes. plane. It day. wasn't like 50 laps in the race. No, it was early. I have never so, in my life been that hot. I you? hit... I thought it was Lyndon Amick I hit, but I guess I hit you. And I thought, I don't know if I've hit him. I don't know if I've done enough damage to this car to end the day. So I drove the car into the inside guardrail. It's like 100 yards across the grass to get there just to make sure that it was f***ing grass. (laughs) Just to make sure it was finished. What is going on in this story? I've Uh, never heard this Okay, let me tell you this part. So we're in the infield carousel. (laughs) And I go out. And I don't know, y'all have to hunt this down. There's a clip either on TV or radio. And they interview me, you know, because I was running like third or something. Yeah. I mean, and the racetrack was terrible. I mean, oh, yeah. one lane. And it was like driving a gravel road. And we get in there, and I interview, and I'm getting ready to walk away. And they interview Dale. Man, I had a great car. God, I hate I got in this wreck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. And I just walked off. I said, that's... <laughs> what? Like, I was not hurt. My car was not hurt. He, yeah. yeah. Are we, you saying, though? That... Oh, go ahead. So we get to... Uh, I hit Lyndon and Amick. I, hit, I must have hit him, too. But... <laughs> Maybe it was me you hit instead of the guard. I don't know. <laughs> but um, we get... I'm sit, I go sit in the lounge of the truck or somewhere. I don't know. And somebody comes in the middle of the race to get me. And they're like... Uh, Will you drive the uh, uh, Glenn Allen's car? I'm like, yeah, I guess, I guess. I, got, I mean, by that time, I'm over, you know, I done forgot how miserable hot I was, and I'm sitting around there thinking about how maybe it might be fun to drive his car. My car wasn't very <laughs> comfortable and very good. But So Glenn Allen is going to get out, and uh, everybody's burnt up. Everybody's cooked. And so Glenn comes in and steps out of his car, throws up right next to me. <laughs> I climb in. That I've, It's on YouTube. I climb in and drove his car. And when I got in, it, it was they were like 28th. And it, all four corners was banged up on it a little bit. Everybody had wrecked because everybody was spinning out on the racetrack because the racetrack's coming up. And you go down in the corner and just hit gravel and you're crashing. And uh, you couldn't, you, know, you couldn't see it. You couldn't, you didn't know where to go to avoid it. I'm out there running around, running around, and they're like, uh, they're like, calm down, calm down. You're running, t- run too hard. I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. I'm just riding around. And uh, but anyways, they ended up finishing 14th. And so when I got in it, he ended up making about four or eight thousand dollars more or something like that, right? And he comes up to me the next week. He goes. He goes, man. We I made uh, like four, eight, four, whatever the number was, four or mm-hmm. six thousand. I made that much more money. I don't know Glenn. Never talked to him before. I'm gonna give you some of that, but he never did. <laughs> I was like, God, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I wasn't getting no money. Daddy wasn't paying me no money. I was making three hundred fifty bucks a week, right? Working at DEI, <sighs> and uh, shit, I just put a two thousand dollar stereo in my four hundred dollar S <laughs> ten truck. So that, that money that Glenn wanted to give me would have been pretty nice. Sounds to me like if he had given you that money, you probably owed it to Robert and Lennon Amick, who you, oh, no. who you saw as a, <laughs> a, a, a ticket to out of the race. Driver told me you had to stay in. You got trouble. You're in the back straightaway. One, two, three automobiles. Four collected. 
I see Robert Presley's in it. He's up against the outside of the back straightaway wall over there. That's Lyndon Amick in the 35. Turning around. Lyndon Amick out of that team, Amick. They had their problems in qualifying and made up for it. There's Robert Presley right there in the 47. Robert Presley badly torn up. He took the brunt of this one. Lap 62, caution is out again, and it's in this critical turns one and two, which is tearing up. Starting to say every driver had told us the whole trip here was to stay on the bottom of the racetrack. They can't do that anymore. They've got to move up a lane, and when they do, they're in the marbles. Here's the result. Sheet metal just completely scratched away there on that right side. You can see Robert Presley moving around in there. He's already removed his helmet. Has the window net down on the other side to let the officials know that he's okay. Boy, those door bars right there did a great job. You can see a lot of contact right in that area there. If that would have been a regular road car, they would have went right through the car. That Those bars did their job. There you see Robert Presley out of the car. We replaced Jeff Fuller earlier in the season in that ride. And that's just a victim of circumstance. The circumstance, that first and second turn breaking down severely. From the blimp, maybe we can get a picture of exactly what happened. Well, we see four cars running together right here. And let's see what happens as they come off of turn two. You can see Preston's car get up next to the wall. He just got up in that loose stuff that Betty was talking about slid sideways and then others coming on hitting each other and what three more getting involved that was dale earnhardt jr in the 31 in that scrape bill parsons giving us this picture yeah he was back at the back of the pack so he saw a lot of it and made a good move there he's changing those gears but that was to get out of the way that time coming in the white and blue car. And that would include Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Robert Presley. Let's start with Robert. Robert, what happened down there? Uh, just the racetrack, you know, in pretty bad shape. Just a lot of gravel out there. Went off in one there and just trying to get back down in line there. And a uh, car come out, got in the wall, and lost it there. And, you know, uh, here come uh, little Dale. There wasn't nothing he could do, you know. Heck, you're moving down off that corner and just got hit. But we was finished before then. Can you assess the track situation for me? How bad is it really? Uh, on about one to 10, it's a nine. It's fixing to be a 10 here the last 200 laps. It's, it's terrible. Is it blazing hot inside the cockpit? No, it's not too bad. You know, we prepared the car there this morning and uh, heat wasn't no bad deal. You know, you ain't running fast enough really out there to get hot, so. All right, let's check in with Dale. Are you okay? And what's your assessment of the track? Uh, we're in good shape. Uh, uh, track's starting to come up a little bit in one and two. Three and four ain't that bad, but I noticed after about uh, probably 30 laps, there's a lot of gravel coming up on the bottom groove, and really, uh, it's just all over the racetrack now. Wasn't much we could do with it with a the wreck there. Robert kind of come down the track in front of us. I was on the outside of another fella. And it's too bad for the sick of the Monte Carlo. Despite the track position we had, we had a good race car and a good handling car, and uh, I was running out there getting they were out there teaching me some lessons, and by about halfway to the race, I figured I had it all figured out, and we just got to the front and had some good track position. Obviously, there's a lot of people intrigued by you and your last name, but you're not getting handed a silver spoon here. You're doing this the hard road. Tell me a little bit about you and your very young crew chief and what you're trying to accomplish here. Well, uh, my crew chief's just 22, just turned 22, same age as me. His name's Wesley Sherrill, and we're just hooked up together to try to learn how, how to you know, get around these new race tracks and uh, work on these race cars. Same old thing everybody else has done growing up in the sport. Um, you know, the guys out there ain't gonna get, ain't gonna hand it to us, and they sure race us real hard today. And uh, it's just kind of hard not to get swept up in it, and, and uh, going in them front corners three wide and stuff like that. You get back out every once in a while. We just had to get get used to doing that and uh, realize how long the races are because they're a lot more longer than we used to. Ken, this is one young driver with a famous last name that's not having anything handed to him. In fact, as much as he's getting, he ought to change his last name to Smith. <laughs> We're back with you at Gateway International Raceway, and you're looking at Dale Earnhardt Jr. about to go in in a reserve role. And I believe it's for the 99 car. 
Remember, that was one that had trouble earlier out here. They finally got it running again, and Glenn Allen is asking for some assistance. It'll be 22-year-old Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Dick Bergeron's just joining him down there. Dick? Dale, you gonna jump into this car? Yeah, that boy's getting a little sick. Uh, he's gonna try to do all he can do, and uh, he's getting to a lot of these guys out here, so he'll jump in here and do what he can. Okay, they just come in now. We're gonna get out of the way and let this driver change occur. And here comes Glenn Allen out, Earnhardt on the driver's side. We're gonna try to get to talk to Glenn Allen. Oh, he is definitely one woozy race car driver. Earnhardt is in good shape. He's jumping right in here. Let's see if we can get to talk a little bit with Glenn Allen, see how he's doing. The crew has just surrounded him. Not a good time to talk. We're going to let him be. They're going to put some cold ice packs on him and let him be. Ken? Dale Earnhardt Jr. earlier, if you're just joining us, was the victim of a crash. He was almost up and over in the back straightaway. Climbed out and calmly described what happened, just like his dad would do. And uh, now is coming in here to replace a badly dehydrated you can lose, what, seven or eight pounds in one of these things, and Glenn Allen is suffering. Well, Glenn Allen has had several problems today, and one of them was the car overheating. As I said at the uh, beginning of the race today, when the car's hot, the driver's hot. You know, back to the uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. story there for a moment, getting in that 99 car. One of the purposes of being here was to try to get as many laps on the racetrack, get experience as good. Well, his car, he was a victim of circumstances there, got crashed. Now he's back in the car, in a car, so he's accomplishing part of what he came here to do, and that's uh, to get some laps. And scoring points for Glenn Allen. And also, you see the damage right there on the back of that car. That may have the crush panels on the inside of the wheels where hot air is coming up in the car as he goes around the racetrack. Good point. Let's talk about the rules about switching drivers here. You can do it. If you're a driver that's qualified and you're standing there in a reserve role, you can get yourself out here and go. Yes, you can. And uh, NASCAR is very considerate when it comes to a situation of this sort. Of course, Dale Hart Jr. has started his fourth Bush race here today, so he has experience, so he's a logical choice to go in that car. And the points collected from here on in all will go to the guy who started the race, in whoever, this case, Glenn Allen Jr. Exactly. Whoever starts the race gets the points.